Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to the first video, the intro video for the Sparky game engine series. So this is going to be a brand new series in which we create a game engine from scratch. And the primary purpose for this game engine is going to be for Ludum Dare. Okay, so if, for those of you who don't know, Ludum Dare is a 48 hour game programming competition in which you have 48 hours to make a game from scratch based on a particular theme. Now, it is supposed to be from scratch, right? And I really enjoy making games from scratch in Ludum Dare. But over the years, it's kind of evolved into a you're allowed to use certain game engines kind of competition. Um, and specifically, you're allowed to use any library of code that is open source, and you're actually allowed to use game engines such as Unity and Unreal. Now, the problem with that is that if I'm making things from scratch and people are using Unity and Unreal, I can't really compete with them. So what I want to do, because I still do kind of want the entire game to be made by myself, um, and I enjoy doing that, um, I'm going to essentially make a game engine for Ludum Dare so that when I start the actual competition, I already have a pretty solid engine slash base code, uh, which will eliminate a lot of the time of making the engine during the competition and allow me to focus more on the actual game, which is going to be great. So this that's basically the purpose of this series. We're going to be making a game engine from scratch. Every minute of development on this engine will be uh, shown. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that it will be a live series. So you might have noticed the face cam that I always do this during live streams. This particular video isn't a live stream, but in the future, I'm probably going to stream this and record it and post it to YouTube. So that way I can interact with the chat and with you guys asking questions and I probably will be able to answer as long as I don't, don't get too distracted. I'll sh I should be able to answer uh, quite a lot of questions that are coming in while I'm actually making the engine so that if you guys have questions, you don't have to wait to the next video or whatever. You guys can just ask me straight away. It'll be a great interactive experience. This is going to be quite an interactive series and hopefully we're going to come up with a game engine. So we've got 45 days till the next Ludum Dare to make a game engine and we start today. So there's probably going to be quite a lot of content over the next few weeks. Okay, anyway, that being said, Sparky is the name of this game engine. Why I was streaming at one time and I needed a name and I think I went to like some random name generator, this came up, so, and I, I really like the name, so Sparky is the name of this game engine. Cool, all right. Uh, one thing I wanna mention before we begin is, if you are good at art or you know someone who is a good, like, artist essentially and is primarily good at stuff like 2d art so whether that be like sprites assets you know backgrounds um all that kind of stuff for the purpose of game development or they would or you yourself or they would like to work on a game development project please send me an email um because i really do want to get some really high quality assets for this uh so that we can test out this engine and you know have it look pretty because with my kind of pixel graphics um, it's just not going to demonstrate, uh, how nice this can look. So if you do know someone or you yourself are a very talented artist and are interested in working on a game project, please send me an email at this email address, which is my email address. Okay. So it's basically my full name, Jan Chernikov, but the A is an at sign because that's awesome. So there we go. That's my email address. Please send me an email there if you... Um, would like to work on a game project and you're an artist. Okay, cool. That out of the way. Hopefully we'll get some pretty awesome assets out of that. Okay, let's move on. So I'm going to, uh, this is going to be the intro video. So I'm going to dis discuss a few things such as the technologies we're going to use. And I'm also going to ask you guys what your preference is essentially. So this is going to be a, as I mentioned, it's going to be a fairly interactive series in which we talk about, um, in which I ask you questions and whatnot. And we actually make this kind of together. So that being said, the first thing we need to decide on is the, what, what technology we're going to make this game engine on. So specifically, we want to start with uh, programming languages. So we've got two main choices right now. We've got C++ and we've got Java. Now, this is not going to be a C++ versus Java video because if it was, that could go on for hours. Um, but I'm going to basically just plot out a few things. So the benefit of C++, so these are going to be the pros for each language, uh, is the fact that it's faster. It's a lot faster um, and it's also more powerful and powerful is mainly what I mean by that is in the sense of language features. Um, so Java, on the other hand, is going to be faster to dev. So faster. Oh, I'm right clicking everywhere because of my freaking like pen that I'm 
Man, that's annoying. So there's this like button right over there. It's yeah. And I'm clicking on it every like second. Oh man. Okay, let's just undo that. Okay, so it's faster to um I'm just going to write dev. So what that means is it's going to be faster to make applications with and it's going to be faster to make this game engine in. Um also, it's going to be easier. And finally, it's going to be uh I'm going to say the portability is probably going to be higher. And what I mean by that is it'll work on uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux pretty much out of the box. Okay, cool. That being said, let's let's just quickly discuss this. So, C++ <laughs> faster. Okay, this is mainly due to the fact that it's native code, but also because, because of the fact that it's native code, um, it allows us to do a few really, really cool things to speed up... Um, our application and just it's just it's miles faster in than Java if you write it properly obviously if you just write rubbish code it's going to be possibly even slower than Java but um, overall it's much much faster and it gives us more control over stuff like memory and whatnot so that's a plus uh, powerful what I mean by that is language feature wise so stuff like macros and I'm I apologize if you guys can't really see this part of the screen because of the face cam but you know anyway um, Stuff like macros um, and the whole pre-processor thing, which is obviously a very big bonus. Um, it allows us to configure certain builds, um, just turn off bits of code and optimize our application and have some pretty crazy um, stuff going on. So that's a that's a really big bonus. It's also got things like pointers and better memory addressing and some of the libraries are very good. And we can even write assembly language code in, in C++ to um to do some pretty cool memory hacks so that being said it's going to be more powerful yeah um this is going to be easier to write in the sense that there's probably going to be less errors um java is a fairly safe language to program in you probably won't be doing too many things in c++ you can overlook something and your application will appear to run fine but it's actually on fire so that's another thing um portability Java, Java's whole thing is the fact that it runs on you. It's write once, run everywhere. That's like their motto. So, if you write it using, if you if you write it, you know, for Windows, it's going to write. It's going to run on Mac and Linux as well. Whereas with C we have to be, we have to basically be careful not to use uh, dependent um, platform dependent libraries and functions and oh, just even like build configurations and stuff like that. It's going to be a bit unfortunate. So anyway, that's kind of a thing I honestly as of right now do not know what I'm going to write this engine in um, I'm gonna let you guys decide okay so post a comment below let me know what you guys think I'm gonna obviously give you my opinion though and my opinion is going to be C++ because it's basically going to be a better engine <laughs> as simple as that if it's written in C++ so but it will be faster and we probably will get more done so it's Overall, the C++ is going to give us a better engine, but it's going to give us a smaller engine in the time frame of 45 days. Obviously, I'll keep working on this after Love and Dare, but remember, we want to meet that Love and Dare deadline so we have something to work with. All right, there we go. So that's my opinion. Leave comments below. Let's get a discussion going and we'll see what we can do. All right, cool. Next, I want to talk about some of the features I actually want to implement in this engine. So this, this is going to be kind of um, our goals and... I'm going to write probably both goals within 45 days and just in general, like long-term kind of goals that we have as well. So a few things. So let's start with this. We're going to start with 2D. Okay. It's going to be a 2D engine. I want to have, no, sorry. Let me, let me rephrase that. It's going to be a 3D engine that's capable of 2D. So we're going to start with trying to get 2D to work because it's simply going to be, it's going to, the development time for a 2D engine is going to be lower then it, the, it's going to be take less time, okay? And since we are within a fairly tight time frame, uh, it makes sense to at least get the 2D working instead of getting 3D and 2D kind of half done. So this is going to be our first priority, getting 2D working. Um, unfortunately, with the whole 2D aspect, um, it's still going to be 3D. And the fact that I still want the ability to load in 3D models, but we can view them in a 2D projection or something. And that shouldn't be too difficult at all. That should be easy. But in terms of 2D, I do want to have a fairly fast and uh, solid 2D renderer uh, ready to go 
at the end of this. So 3D is going to be kind of um, kind of the the I guess the next step. So we'll make sure the 2D is working and we'll slowly start integrating 3D into it as well. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want it to be uh, as a bare minimum, it should work on Windows, right? Um, if we have time and whatever, Mac and Linux are next, of course. If we write it in Java, this will be out of the box. If we write it in C++, it probably won't be. I'll try not to use too many Windows API um, dependent things or exclusives. Um, but yeah. The other thing I would like, this is more of a long-term goal, but I do want it to run on the web. So I do want it to run in the, on the web browser, inside like a web browser. Um, so we will have, we'll, we'll have to, one thing I should mention is it will be using OpenGL. But the other thing is, um, if we do want to have it on the web, we'll need something that will essentially port the OpenGL into WebGL. And we'll also have to restrict ourselves to only using WebGL features. Anyway, it's going to be a lot, um, it's going to involve a lot of work to get that to happen. Uh, if we do end up using a C++, there's something called uh, mscripten, which is actually pretty good. I've used it a few times. It works very well. Basically, it will compile your C++ code into JavaScript and your OpenGL code into WebGL, or it'll even emulate Glass 2, which is OpenGL ES or embedded systems, which is what's running on your phones and mobile devices. But essentially, um, mscripten is actually pretty good. I've used it a few, fair few times. Uh, just for both, it, it emulate, it's got some, it basically, it essentially converts C++ to JavaScript. It's pretty good. It's pretty crazy. And it runs faster than JavaScript because it uses a few, like, it uses like, what is it? I think it's called ASM.js or something. It uses like a, um, Mozilla's like ultra fast JavaScript kind of hack thing <laughs> to make it run even faster than JavaScript. So it essentially it runs almost like native code. It's pretty cool. It's pretty crazy. So this might be a real possibility if we do use C++. Um, the other thing I want, this is more of a long-term goal. So these are kind of the things. I want it to be very fast. So the 2D renderer at least should be just lightning fast. I want to be able to render stuff like 50,000 sprites easily on the screen at one time. So that'll be our kind of beginning goal, 50,000 sprites at like 60 frames or whatever on a fairly moderate computer. But um, we'll move on from there and we'll see how good, how good we can make this. But the point is I want it to be really efficient, which is obviously leaning in the favor of C++ as well. All right, cool. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, um, this is more of a long-term goal as well, kind of like the web thing, but I also want to be able to use this engine. I want to be able to write games for the engine in C Sharp, Java, or C++. So the cool thing is if we, um, if we uh, write this in, in C++, then it's actually fairly easy to set it up. So C Sharp, we can link it via CLI. Java, we can link it via JNI, which is going to not be as good as CLI, but it's still going to be kind of okay. And C++, of course, is the actual language, so that's fine. Um, Java does not really allow you to use C++ objects, so we'd have to basically wrap them all in functions, which would be a pain, but we could get it working, essentially. Uh, CLI will let us use objects, so she, the, the C sharp plus C++ combination is pretty good. Um, and then the question, you know, that, that begs the question, why do we even need Java if we're using C sharp? And partly, of course, C sharp is pretty much a better language, but um, unfortunately, it doesn't run very well on uh, not Windows. So yeah, I know there's mono framework, you don't need to lecture me about that, but the, it just does not work as well. Okay, cool. So that's our plan. So this should be a pretty versatile engine, as you guys can probably tell. I'm going to pretty much wrap up the video there. I don't want this to go on too long. What are we at? Like 10 minutes? 20 minutes almost. Wow. Well, more like 15. But anyway, um, th those, those are the main features. Okay. Uh, we'll be using OpenGL. We're obviously going to use my, uh, modern OpenGL. I'll be trying my best to support 3.3 as a minimum. If we do go on to WebGL, though, that will unfortunately mean we'll probably have to drop to around 2, I think, because OpenGL... Uh, ES2, so Glaze 2, is I think about equivalent to WebGL, um, roughly. So we'll have to unfortunately sacrifice a few things, but as I said, as a base, we're going to be going for Windows. So we won't be, we won't even be thinking much about this. I'll try again, as I'm writing the code, I'll try and make it not so platform dependent, but um, th th we, we want to get this as, as a minimum. So this is kind of we're not even going to think about this when we start writing the engine too much. Okay, we'll kind of have it at the back of our minds, but not too much. All right, cool. So that's our plan. That's the master plan 
for Sparky. So uh, let's talk about how this is going to happen. So one thing I want to mention is this will be open source. You guys are free to use this for Lottam Dare or for whatever you want. Basically, it'll be under the GPL license. I'm going to put it on GitHub. So when I record um, episodes and I update the code, I will be pushing it onto GitHub. There's actually a um, engine already here called Sparky. I, I renamed it to Sparky Test. This was something I was messing with with a live stream. This our engine will be completely different to this Sparky engine. So don't. I wouldn't copy this code and assume you will predict the future of what I'm going to type because this is something completely different basically is what I'm saying. But um, if you want to follow me on GitHub or whatever, the repository will pop up here called Sparky. I'll obviously link it after every video and whatnot, but that's what's going to happen. And finally, one thing I want to mention is um, twitch.tv forward slash the channel is where the live streams are actually going to happen. So <clears throat> yeah, go ahead and follow me there. Um, and then obviously follow me on Twitter as well, twitter.com forward slash the Cherno to stay up to date with pretty much everything. And every time I stream, I'll be posting on that as well. So anyway, those are, that's basically how this is going to happen. I'm pretty excited. We've only got 45 days. So let's make a game engine.